Good day, everyone. Um, tonight we're doing another Us and the Virus chat, and I'm thrilled to have a mate of mine all the way from the UK. His name is Carl Beach, and so welcome, Carl. Hi, uh, mate. Good to be with you. Yeah. So I uh, I met Carl a few years ago. He was speaking at the Belgrave Heights Men's Convention, um, and I must say he's not the typical speaker at the Men's Convention. Uh, he was a lot more wild than your usual civilized guys. But um, after the talk, we had a there was like a billiard room, and we were staying there. So we I think we played table tennis most of the night and just chatted and <laughs> hit it off and then last year I had the opportunity to go over to the UK and I uh, went over to Chesterfield and, and caught up with Carl and heard some of the great stuff he's doing and saw one of the most impressive man caves I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm in it right now. <laughs> You're in it right now. <laughs> so it looks like it's progressed a bit since I was there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Tell us about I... some of the stuff you got in there. Oh uh, yeah, it's um... Oh look at that. Yeah, we'll put the gun rack away. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you literally go down the stairs, don't you? It's down downstairs at your house. Yeah, it's a converted cellar. Yeah, we we bought an old house some years ago and spent ten years renovating it. It's on the market now. So there we go. Yeah, well, you build, you pass it on. Yeah, for sure. And take the main cave with you. This, well, I wish. Yeah. I might, I've got I've got the alternative house we hope to move to has got a, quite a good one. So we'll see. Oh, nice. Was that the uh, prerequisite when you looked at that house? Hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a lot's changed mate since we saw each other last year um we could actually see each other last year which was nice but obviously there's been this thing called coronavirus that's um it's been so unique because it's impacted everyone on earth it's not just us in australia or you in the uk um it's really affected everyone um i think in australia we've managed to avoid the worst of it um i think the uk has been hit a lot harder so be really good to hear from you about um, the impact of COVID nineteen and what it's looked like for you in the UK. Um, well, we've been in we're sort of week seven of lockdown, but today, um, obviously, it's in the morning for me, evening for you at the moment. So today is the start of a new uh, a new system. So we've, we've introduced a five point system in the UK, where five is we're all about to die, and one is <laughs> it's okay, and we're, we're apparently we're hovering between a four and a three. So. Uh, we've been in a situation here where all our shops were shut, restaurants were shut, pubs were shut, pretty much the same as you guys, I guess. All retail was shut. Yep. Um, most most businesses uh, closed down um, and we were allowed out once a day uh, for exercise as long as we're only with our household for a maximum of an hour. Mm. Um, we weren't really permitted to drive anywhere, so the streets have been dead, roads quiet. Um, and then today they're saying, whereas they said... Uh, only go to work if you must. Mm. Now they're saying go to work if you can. Mm. So that's changed. And we're allowed to meet one other person in the park from another household as long as we stay apart. But there are fines for breaking that rule of £100. You can go up to 3500 if you keep breaking it. So serious fines. So basically you can, you can see someone else, but you can't, you can't see your parents together, stuff like that, if you're in separate households. Yeah, okay. but, the, but they're trying to get the economy back now because we've got this incredible bailout system here. Again, I think you've got a similar scheme, but the government are paying 80% of people's wages at the moment. Yeah, wow. And self-employed people are getting grants and all sorts of stuff. So it's, it's been interesting. Let's say that it's been interesting, but really tough on um, you know, low-income families, people living in you know flats without gardens, stuff like that. Mm. Um, really tough. Some people have been able to ride it a lot better than others. But yeah, interesting times. Yeah, I think it's it's often the people that are already struggling that struggle even more in these times. I know we do a, a food van a couple of nights a week for homeless and disadvantaged people and we haven't been able to do that. So we've been able to put care packs and stuff together, which has been great. But you feel really sorry for these people that are already struggling and, you know, that it just impacts them in such an incredible way. So it's very sad. Yeah. Hmm. So you're obviously a, you're a church planter. You planted Redeemer King a number of years ago. Yep. Yep. And... Uh, obviously a pastor so how's the how's the coronavirus affected you and how have you i guess pivoted in this season to make sure that you connect and and care and, and still lead people i think we're, we're we're quite similar characters so when this news broke i'm like quite like innovation i quite like yeah. change i like a challenge <laughs> so yeah. i think some some of my mates are like what we're going to do our whole church is falling apart but i tell you what i do think the nub of it is i think if you built your church on on the vibe alone and the atmosphere you, you you're, you're stuffed but if you build it on community and care and relationships and, and biblical truth and mission you're going to do all right 
because yeah. those things build in the ability to adapt and innovate because you, you, you're Christ and people centered. If you are vibe centered, um, you, I think you're really going to struggle. Mm. So um, our church actually is beautifully held together, but the, the first and growing. So the weirdly, so the first thing we did was basically break down everyone into our home groups to be a home group, group led church. We call them connect groups. Um, but more people seem to be calling them home groups now. So I've lost my brand in there. <laughs> so we, um, we, uh, we basically have our home group leaders, our, our pastors of their people. And then we have a pastoral team looking out for people who are not in home groups, but their job is to feed them into home groups and look out for needs. Then we have a project coordinators or who are trying to help people who are most disadvantaged. So we try to get everyone online, which is difficult when you're dealing with a lot of uh, hurting and broken people on the poorer end of society. So, because our church has a special focus on that. Mm. So we did, uh, as I um, said to you, we were chatting just briefly before this, weren't we, that we did get a load of cheap tablets from China. <laughs> <laughs> and we started to fund people's internet and we, we developed telephone church just to get everyone connected. So we got around 90% of the church now are in home groups. Which, yeah. is, which is really good. Yeah. And we set up online now for, we opened an online pub called Redeemer King Arms. <laughs> uh, so we've had quiz nights there. That's good with a virtual pub background. And we've seen the church grow. All, um, daily people are, are connecting with us. We have a close Facebook group. So all of that's been great. We've been able to really help people who are disadvantaged. There's been an increase here with domestic violence. You know, people can find together. So we're able to help refer, um, uh, relocate one, one lady and her kids and we furbish a, a furnish, sorry, a, a house very quickly, stuff like that, and lots of um, prescription pickups and shopping for people. And um, and it's online now for seen a couple of people get saved last week. We've had three people come to Christ in the last 10 days, actually, through that. So awesome. the church has grown. So to be honest with you, it's beautiful. We had an online communion the other day, way, way over 80% of our church attending that. And it was just very special. You know, I, I still believe in meeting together, but that, we could come on to that later. But at the moment, I'm, I'm I'm actually enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. I think there's certainly silver lining, isn't there? You know, more time at home, more time with the kids and family. Yeah. And, What's uh, not to like? Yeah, <laughs> I said to our church this morning that you know, don't wish this season away too quickly. Um, obviously, we want to see yeah. coronavirus gone, but don't wish away yeah. some of those benefits that we're all experiencing and. And, and think about the rhythms on the other side of, of not just rushing back to what you were doing, but really think, okay, what have we had to let go and what have we lost by doing it? Um, and what have we gained yeah. by being present more? So, no, it's really good. Yeah, it's a recalibration happening, isn't there? I was walking along with my wife, Karen, the other day. She made the most of this one hour's walk thing, you know. Mm. And it feels like England in the 70s. I know people are moving out of each other's way because we're crossing the road from each other. More people are saying hello. Yep. There's a gentler pace. People are connected with their kids. And I'm like, man, how many precious moments have I missed by being so driven and, and wild on the road and trying to duck and dive and make things happen? Yep. So there's this great recalibration happening across society, actually. So um, it's, a, it's a bittersweet time. Yep. You know, the bitterness of people dying, suffering, anxiety, but a sweet time too, yeah. I think. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's interesting. My, my son, who's seven, Lenny, he said a couple of times just recently, hey, Dad, we should do this more often. And that's not something he's ever said before. Yeah. And so it's, it hit me when he said it that, um, you know, he's feeling the benefits of a time like this because I'm yeah. present more. And I want to right. make sure on the other side that, that I'm still investing that way into my kids. And that's a real yeah. challenge for achievers like you and I um, yeah. to, to actually not see our identity in what we achieve, but to, to really invest in the things that are most important. 100%. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So when you think about the people at Redeemer King, um, you think overall the general feeling of well-being and the spiritual temperature is, is pretty good at the moment? Spiritual temperature, for sure. I mean, I think you have to keep mission front and centre in front of people. So um, and you keep needing to tell the stories of faith and breakthrough and rescue, um, particularly in these times. I think if you keep people focused on the rescue mission, Everything else seems to come into line. People will pray more, get more into their Bibles. Um, so we have, we have Testimony Tuesday and Thankful Thursday, little videos that we put out. And that's helped people. We, we create this closed Facebook group. We're all doing our different things, aren't we? But that, we've kept that to banter only. 
Yeah. Uh, no, no COVID, um, you know, paranoia conspiracy theories are allowed on there <laughs> or um, snake oil treatments. Uh, so it's just, just for banter and, and yeah. prayer requests. And we're working hard to keep people feel connected. Yep. There have been anxiety, there's anxieties in people and the loss of people's jobs is a threat. One of the things we did do is put, we, we were trying to buy a building mm. and we, we, we were growing like you guys and uh, we thought well, we need a big base, but we, we decided to sacrifice our building fund um, and put it into a hardship fund. So we put 25% of quite substantial money into a hardship fund to make sure no one loses their house out of this. Yeah, wow, that's um, awesome. So we sacrificed our building for for that, really. Um, but, which, but I don't think we're going to need a big building coming out of this anyway. Yeah. But I think God blesses that. You know, if you, you put the people first, you know, put put the mission, God, the mission, the people above your your ambitions. God will bless it, wouldn't he? Yeah. So uh, that's, that's helped people. People feel safe now, I think, in our church anyway. Yeah. Yep. No, that's awesome. So I think we're learning a lot obviously about God and a lot about our world and people, but we're learning a lot personally as well. So what have your big, biggest learnings been so far since this all started? I had a really strange moment actually, mate. Um, a lot of people don't know, or I hadn't told them until recently that I'm a, I don't, it's been some a journaler, but I, I had 20 years worth of journals and because I'm a bit OCD, they're all from the same brand. They all look the same. <laughs> and they're all sitting on my shelf and, I, and, I, and they're full of scriptures, things people have said, stuff I've written down after meetings that I wrote. That I think you feature in one of them. So, um, and poems and stuff like that. Yep. And I was looking at them and, I, and I'm not a great one for this. Uh, you know, people seem to hear God's voice way more than me. But I had this little still whisper in my soul of God saying, I want you to throw them. Wow. And I'm like, what? 20 years of a notepad. And I was, on the, uh, I was on a Zoom call in the accountability group with this guy called Mark, who's head evangelist for Elim, actually. Mm. And I told him, and it, the other guy on it was Warren, his head of sports chaplaincy globally, so sports chaplaincy ministry. And they went, yeah, yeah, I think, I think you're going to really regret it, but it sounds like the sort of thing God would say. So I did, I binned them. Wow. I threw them away. And I'm like, why did I do that? <laughs> that's really weird I'm not, not given I mean you know me I'm quite pragmatic I'm not, not given to that kind of thing so anyway I was having my time just, just sitting in here actually praying and, and again I felt this small whisper saying unlearn Carl mm-hmm. to unlearn wow to unlearn everything that you've been doing the ways you've done stuff uh, the way you've gone about things you've got to unlearn it and you've mm-hmm. got to relearn it's, it's a new day Yes. Yeah, so profound. personally, that's that's what I'm going through. It, a new ways of mission, evangelism, the way we pass to people, the, the structures of our church, the ministries that I lead, our network. Uh, it's a hard thing to do to unlearn, mm. but it was almost like symbolic. And so I now have um, this is my new notepad of a different brand. Oh, nice! <laughs> it's blank, and I've dared written in. I haven't dared writing it yet. No, nah, well, you'll have to think about this afterwards. To write yeah. this page one, <laughs> chat with Luke. Yes, yeah. yeah, it. So, but I think I think that's the key thing as leaders, strategic leaders. We, we if we go back to what we did before, mm. after this, and just and just roll on as if nothing happened, failure. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's a recalibration, but I also think it's a chance to do something new. I think we could be on the verge of some new sort of reformation in the use, in the way the gospel is proclaimed our sharpness of gospel focus, um, our appreciation of people who are low income. I think there's just a lot lot out there at the moment. And the way we practice church on Sundays even. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I um, said just before this pandemic hit that I feel like we're in the midst of another reformation. It's not so much a theological one, although some of that's required. I think it's one of our posture and practice. And I think now that's been fast-tracked and we certainly are having to reform the way we've thought about things, the way we've done things in order to continue to be viable and growing and, yeah. and effective on mission. So yeah. Um, yeah, people like you and I, I guess, are excited by those sorts of changes. But I think on the other yeah. side, uh, not everyone loves change. So that'll be a challenge to um, encourage those that are feeling a bit unsettled, I think. The people are people are searching. There's some stats came out. I, just, I was looking at them earlier before we came online. Something like... Um, 
Tier Fund did this research in the UK. They said three million new people have turned to prayer since lockdown. Yeah, I heard that. Um, church attendance, at least 7% of the nation are tuning into online church services beforehand, but that's 24% of the British population are tuning into online church, and wow. 7% before. I mean, yep. these, these things are just extraordinary. You know, so I think we have a moment to, to really do something special, maybe. Yeah. Absolutely. So lots of prayers needed for that, that's for sure. So, I mean, like you said before, it has been a very difficult time for a lot of people, but I also know you and I know that you are the supreme optimist. Um, so you've talked about, you know, some of the opportunities. Can you think of any that you think are real opportunities for the church in this time? Things that you think, yeah, we've got to go, go hard at this right now. And can you share a personal story of something that's happening for you? Yeah. So, um, I think if ever there's a time for a bit of courage and guts, it's now. Mm. Um, my mate Rex, on, on, on Good Friday, Rex has lived in the same house for 40 years. Uh, maybe 37 years. That could be an evangelist exaggeration, but it's a long time. <laughs> That's allowed. Yeah, he lives next to Mick, who they're both in my church. Mick's a builder, but he's, a, he's an ace trumpeter. He plays trumpet for brass bands. And um, Rex put a handwritten note through his whole street saying, um, on Easter Sunday, come outside at 10 o'clock. I'm going to read you the account of the resurrection from the Bible. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but these things with people thought like proper full on. And I'm, I'm like, Why, what's that about? Anyway, on the, uh, on the Sunday, he came out to his front gate with Mick. He said to Mick, I want you to play him on a trumpet and I'm going to read the Bible. The whole street turned out. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. And, and, he, and he, so he calls out, Mick's, Mick's going to play a hymn on a trumpet. <laughs> so Mick gets his trumpet out and plays, plays like Amazing Grace or something. Yep. And then all Rex did, he said, this is the account of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And read it from the Bible to the street, shouted out to the street. And then said, you know, a very 30 second short gospel message. This is why Jesus came. This is why he died. This is what it means he rose again. Very, very short. And then someone in the street shouted out, Rex, would you pray over the whole street? Pray the Lord's Prayer. Wow. And everyone bowed their heads as he prayed over everyone. And then they, they stood out there and chatted from, from gate to gate. Mm. And I'm like, that, that, that is extraordinary. I, I, and, and we've seen it here, like my neighbours, I've lived next door to my neighbours for 10 years. And we've, we've met each other for evening drinks, standing on ladders, looking over the fence. Mm. And, they're, and they're quoting my sermons back. They've gone online saying, oh, it's like you said the other day, uh, you know, on your, your talk on YouTube. And I'm like, <laughs> listening to my talks. And then they said, I suppose your faith must really help you uh, at the moment. I went, yeah, how did you, how did you become a Christian? I'm like, <laughs> 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 so I think... Um, I think it's just a, a, a beautiful, beautiful time, really, mm. um, of opportunity, as long as we have a bit of courage. Yeah. And I think it's so important to be spirit-led, isn't it? When, when the Lord prompts you with something, just have a go. Yeah. This great man once said to me, um, nothing ever happened to a bloke that didn't have a go. <laughs> yeah. And my second life motto is, and let's see if we can get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> From what I know of you, get, you get away with a lot, mate. Those gatherings. <laughs> Let's have a go, eh? Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, it's very good. So what do you think? I know you said before it's a bit early to sort of guess on what it's going to look like on the other side, but, but what do you think will change on the other side and what are some things that you're doing to prepare for that? So um, I think in the UK with our transmission rates and number of deaths, we've been hit quite hard. They're saying 50,000 so far, mm. directly or indirectly died. So I think we're going to be in this for the long haul over here. And I certainly think that gatherings of our size won't be permitted for a very long time. Mm. Now you can either hang your, your head in, in, in despair or you think, great, how do we, how do we overcome, adapt and improvise to meet this new, new normal, as they're calling it. Mm -hmm. So um, what we're essentially going to do is maintain ourselves as a home group church, but then meet in clusters as home groups. So my plan is, instead of buying up one big building to house everything we're doing, probably... Um, take over little community halls and there's a lot of little offices and meeting places going to be coming up for sale sadly because mm -hmm. of failed businesses and stuff yeah so i think we'll probably be getting three four home groups together in eight six to eight different locations in the town 
and having little Redeemer Kings popping up with our, our talks streamed into its venue, but they can worship together, interact together, pray for one another. Um, and that will probably be, once we're able to have gatherings of 30 to 50 people, which I think will probably be next year now, mm. we'll pop up Redeemer King all over the town. We won't prescribe where people will have to go. Yep. We will have a limit on numbers. So that will enable us to multiply and to plant into areas around us too, some of the poor communities that are around us. So and I lead this thing called Edge Network across the country. And we're essentially smaller churches on estates reaching very broken people. So this, this is ideal for us. Yep. So I think we can multiply church planting very, very quickly, break the church down into groups. Um, maybe some acquire some premises which if we we're ever able to meet on mass again at least be good on the balance sheet we might be able to borrow against more seldom and buy something bigger yep. but then we'll probably use the money that we we were going to buy a big building as well to buy a couple of houses for rough sleeping mm. rough sleepers so we Amazing. we do feel the lord wants us to solve rough sleeping in chesterfield along with the other churches yeah um so we might buy some houses for people who are rough sleeping emergency accommodation instead of a big venue but also there's a lot of unity uh, emerging between churches in the town. We're praying together. And I think there could be some beautiful kingdom collaboration. Yeah. And Ronald, Reagan, Ronald Reagan said this thing, didn't he? Um, there's no limit to what a man can do or where he can go if he doesn't mind who gets the credit. Mm, yep. I think that is so important right now. It's not about who's doing what. It's can we, can we make kingdom impact? Yep. It doesn't matter whose name's above what. Yeah, for sure. Let's just get on with it. So I think we'll spread our church out. We might even have ecumenical projects in that. It's a new day. Yeah, absolutely. As long as, as, long as people are hearing the gospel and we're working out how to disciple people effectively, which is a big challenge at the moment. Yep. Um, game on. Yeah. It's interesting in the collaboration thing. We put out these five touch points of follow during COVID and it was community connect, uh, communication, connection, care, yep. um, collaboration, and change and and i really for a couple of years now i've really been on that collaboration thing i think working together um you know when, when non-christians look at christians fighting over their their territory and all that it's just embarrassing right. we can yeah. achieve so much more together and i'm really excited in our region how how well the churches work together to meet needs and there's yeah. no sense of competition or my area or any of that sort of stuff and and i really think that's one of the you know in a post-christendom world I think that's one of the key things is collaboration, working together. Um, yeah. So it's exciting to hear it's happening in the UK as well. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think it's a new day. Um, we've just got to be um, have undefended hearts, open hearts, and, and work with people you might not have worked with before. I think this is a time for releasing people, innovating. Just on a micro scale, there's a guy in our church writing you know, stories about trees in the Bible. And people are loving it, you know, and people are writing stories and poems. They're things we might not have published before on Facebook, yep. on our papers. But people are being blessed. The things I thought, well, I don't think we'll make that front and centre six weeks ago are now, now main features on our Facebook page. Yeah. yeah it's, um, the <laughs> the creativity has come out, hasn't it? It's been great. Yeah, yeah it's great. Yeah, yeah, really good. The series on trees in the Bible is strangely mesmerising. Yeah, I'll have to yeah. <laughs> you have to pass on some of those stories, mate. Oh, they're beautiful, yeah. Yeah. So one of the things I love about you, mate, is that you do have a go that you, you know, we're very similar in a lot of ways, but you also love the word of God like I do. And um, yeah. I just wondered in a time like this, what sort of truths of scripture or particular passages or things about God do you hold on to in a time like this? Yeah. Um, I think for me, um, God's grace and faithfulness and his kindness to us has just shone through. Um, mm. He is so kind. Um, so I, th I think a, a lot of people are coming out with, you know, reading Psalms. I've uh, seen a lot of that mm. on Facebook and social media at the moment. But for me, there's one passage that I've been reading over and over and over again, because I think as God is so kind and gracious to us. Um, in turn, it has got to impact our character. Um, I'll read it to you. Uh, I'm, I'm reading from an NIV, which I don't normally do. I'm a bit of an NASB guy, but hey. Most people have the NIV, mate, so you're in good company. That's why I'm using it. Yeah, it's a compromise. <laughs> it's almost a paraphrase, isn't it? <laughs> almost. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. And that, that really struck me. 
let your gentleness be evident all. You look on social media and there's so much hate and anger. We're, we're the guys of the opposite spirit, I think. Yeah. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, pure, lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Yeah. I right. think in these days, what a beautiful scripture. Yeah. The Lord is near, and his peace will be with you. Absolutely. And that's been my prayer almost daily over my church, really, and the yeah. movements I'm leading and stuff. Yeah, yeah, oh, very good, mate. Well, uh, you were meant to be heading down under soon. Um, unfortunately, it's uh, been delayed for some time now. But when you do, mate, we'd love to have you at follow and um, be good to catch up. And be so cool, yeah. People in our family here, It'd be awesome. Yeah, I look forward to it, mate. Just as hope it happens next year, eh? It would I have been so. September, but I will be heading over at some point. Yeah, definitely. That'd be great, mate. And uh, thanks so much for making the time to chat. And um, thank you, mate. Pleasure. Hopefully it's been a good start to your day. It's been a good end to my day, mate. So I can go and have some dinner now. But I'm going to go and get a big coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's the opposite. I'm not getting one of those. I won't sleep. <laughs> uh, good to hey, great, great catching up with you, mate. Really appreciate it. Cheers, man. Bless you, mate.